happening? I believe that we are alive. Welcome. Oh, oh no, no, maybe now we are. Oh. There's that little wheel going. Hi, everybody. <laughs> We're going to wait and see if the wheel keeps on going. But welcome to Wednesday Q&A Live. There we go. Welcome. Now I think we are. Welcome to Wednesday Q&A Live, week three. I'm David Rainishek. And I'm Katrina Rainishek. And we are the co-founders of JuiceFeasting.com. Glad mm -hmm. to have you guys here. We're here for the next 30 minutes to an hour to answer your questions. So if you're seeing this pop up and you've got a question about juice feasting, intermittent fasting, uh, diet and nutrition, health, on getting into a healing state of mind. We are here to answer your questions. Almost everything is on the table. So you can post your comments below this video and you can ask questions. Mm -hmm. um, I credit juice feasting with saving my life. Um, way back in the early 2000s, I've been coaching and teaching for almost 20 years with Katrina. And before finding out about juice feasting, I was really, really sick. Uh, and it took three years. It took three years for me to figure out what was going on and about $50,000 in medical bills. Feasting. Before not finding juice feasting. juice feasting. No, not three years of juice feasting. <laughs> three years of search and spending about $50,000 on medical bills. And a lot of frustration, but some stick with itness to figure out that I needed to turn towards doing live juice mm -hmm. and live food nutrition for a while to heal what ailed me. And so I've been doing juice feasting ever since. And that's why we've got juicefeasting.com. This is in accord with not doubting the circumstances of your life. If you're in a place where your health is not so great, um, trust that the fact that you're not feeling well is going to turn you towards the things you need to do to make your health and your life better and will make meaning and purpose out of what you're encountering right now. It's one of the most creative spaces you can put yourself into when you're looking at improving your health or healing something that's been difficult mm -hmm. for some time. So we're here to answer your questions on that, to help you tailor an approach for yourself or get some pointing out instructions on your health and your way forward. Because we want so, you to feel good. So please bring on your questions. Um, we will do this weekly Q&A for everyone again mm -hmm. next week. And later on this May, we will be having Q&A sessions just for members of juicefeasting.com. So hit us up now with your questions. Yep. And if we don't have any questions, do you have anything exciting to share? Well, sure. I mean, we've got plenty of topics to share. We've just got a lot of stuff. informal. We're just going to chat yep. until we get questions. We can just talk away about things. I had something exciting that happened this morning. What happened this morning? We have been working towards doing some overnight backpacking trips with the, our kids as a family. We'd really like to get out and do some long distance hiking, multi-day, multi-night. And to take your kids backpacking, you need certain gear. So we've ordered, we've got our backpacks back yeah. there, but we've ordered sleeping bags and a tent. We do have a tent, but it's not lightweight enough to take backpacking. So we just got the sleeping bags today and it feels like a good metaphor for going on a journey with your health. Because going on a journey with your health is also an adventure that you build bit by bit and piece by piece, depending on where you start from. Some people start with, you know, a long distance to go and some people are just needing a few little tweaks. And so I love it that we're slowly building up to that. And mm -hmm. I think it's really helpful to remember when you're working on your health that each little piece of your puzzle is an acquisition and yeah. gets you one step closer. So we're like one step closer to getting out on the trail and maybe finding juice feasting is your one step closer. Or juice getting feasting, a blender yeah, or, or a juicer a or, a or juicer. your nut milk bags or your set of canning jars or whatever yeah. it is. You make all these acquisitions, put those pieces into place bit mm -hmm. by bit and move your health inevitably forward. Yeah. Now, Katrina did a sailing trip for almost a year when she was younger. Mm -hmm. I went backpacking the Appalachian Trail from end to end in 1999 for seven months so we're familiar with adventuring but having kids and the equipment has evolved we're putting our stuff back together so i mean these are ultra lightweight backpacks sleeping bags that we've got we're familiar in the house with adventuring? we're familiar with adventuring but not with kids and so you're always learning i mean you never yeah. plateau with regards to your health you never plateau with regards to getting better at almost any endeavor in life. Mm -hmm. So we're relearning how to do, I'm even relearning how to do ultra lightweight backpacking and getting our gear together. 
so that we can go on really long trips. And we're talking about yeah. multi-thousand mile backpacking trips. So We have um, some people. Hi, Ryan. Do you do water fast too? Yes, we're... Yes. Well, we're fasting right now. We're doing yep. intermittent fasting, yep. which both of us feel really good doing. Our bodies do really well with it. So right now, I am intermittent fasting most days. I eat between noon or two. Mm -hmm. I kind of will fast every morning until noon or around two. And then I'll eat a lunch, and then I'll also have dinner. And then I'll start fasting again around 6.30, mm -hmm. and then fast again until the next day. At noon yeah and you're doing something really similar I'm doing so something really similar and mm -hmm. I did uh, for several months rounds of doing 24 to about 65 68 hour fasts mm -hmm. kind of rolling through and then I eat in an eating window of one to six hours and then I do another fast of somewhere around that window mm -hmm. and I'm gonna be getting back into that now as we move into the warmer weather in the spring mm -hmm. so I'll be doing some rolling fasts again where I'm going minimum around 20 21 hours or so it's where I'm really comfortable with on a daily basis and upwards of 48 to uh, close to 72 hours and then eating window for one to six hours and then right back into a fast of 20, 21 hours and maybe a bit longer using a tracking app um, on the phone. So I use the Life Fasting app. So if anybody who's on this or watching this, if you haven't gotten a fasting app together for yourself where you can track your fasting window and your eating window, the Life Fasting app is excellent and it's free. Mm -hmm. And so it can just, be really motivating to see how many hours you fasted over a week because it'll yeah. give you a an add up of those hours. Yeah. Water, like a longer water fast, you know, if you want to do a long water fast, can be really amazing and beneficial for health too. I think if I were to discover at some point that I had cancer or some other really tenacious illness, I would be looking at doing that with mm. support, with medical yeah. support. It can be challenging to do a water fast on your own. You kind of want to be tracking your vitals and things can go off pretty quickly. If you mean a just, long water fast? A long water fast. Like right. For mm -hmm. the reversal of an illness. Yeah. And I know years ago when we were talking with a lot of other health experts in the raw vegan paradigm, everyone was really excited about juice feasting because it's a much gentler cleanse and for someone to go from a standard American diet to a water fast can be really intense on the body. You can go through a lot of detox symptoms and some people even thought it was really dangerous. And so they were excited about the gentleness of a juice feast yeah. because you're still getting a lot of that detox and cleanse and you're giving your body a chance to repair. You're also f flooding your body with all the vitamins and minerals and nutrients from all your produce. So there's, you know, you're balancing out the detox that's happening. Yeah. But yeah, water fasts, I think, I think water fasting is an amazing technology. And I'll add to that, that mm. if you're looking at healing something serious using uh, fasting, big fasting windows, most of the benefits that you're going to get, meaning how far you can dial up your body's cleansing and healing abilities with a fast, you're going to get in the two to five day window. After that... For the most part, you're you're just going to kind of plateau with the benefits. And you may find that there's detriments because you fasted longer than your body's comfortable fasting with. So most of the folks that I'm learning from on fasting, most of my experience, the way that I coach clients to get the most benefits from a fasting paradigm mm -hmm. is to fast between one and five days maximum, then have an eating window, and then return to another fasting window of one to five days mm -hmm. and do that appropriately. Doing that well means that you'll never, or at least you should not find yourself ever getting into dangerous territory with your blood chemistry or sodium potassium balance, a whole lot of other things that are usually watched when someone does a longer fast. So for example, Ryan is asking right now, um, you know, I'm thinking about doing a longer fast, maybe something like 10 days. If you're experienced doing fasting, then, I mean, you can find people on YouTube who don't know anything about fasting and they go for 10 days. So I'll preface that by saying that. But... If you want to be the safest and get the most benefits from doing a water fasting paradigm, my guidance to you would be water fast for three or four days, close it out in a tiny window. Your body's going to easily close that out and then move right back into another water fast of a few days length of time and then close that with a tiny eating window that's low on the glycemic index. 
and then do another few days of fasting. You'll get almost the same benefits that you'd get from straight fasting all the way through 10 days, mm -hmm. but you won't put yourself in a dangerous position. Uh, mm -hmm. As I've said before, the arc of healing is long. I said this mm -hmm. last week, the arc of healing is long. You don't have to be quite in that much of a hurry. I mean, let's say it took you 15 days or 20 days of doing intermittent fasting and doing some juicing to get the benefits that you would get out of a 10 day water fast but it was safe the whole way through over 20 days. Take the 20 days, get the benefits in 20 days instead of in 10 and be safe, right? And go to work and, and have the, uh, the mental state of mind to take care of your family and drive your car and, and do all the other things without going on this uber long, and what I'm talking about is more than seven day water fast, where you could put yourself in a position that you need medical assistance because things have gotten too out of balance. So there's time. The arc of healing is long. And you also I don't do, advise 10 day water fasts. You also do gain experience and start recognizing what your body is doing. And so yeah. then, you know, you may get to the point where doing a 10 day water fast is really full of ease and you feel totally right. in control the whole time. Right. Ryan mentioned something about minerals. We did, we have talked about our electrolyte water that we make mm -hmm. when we are fasting. I don't find now that I've been doing intermittent fasting for longer that I need it very often, but when I was first getting into it, I found it invaluable to have because it keeps everything in balance and you don't even feel like you're fasting if yeah. you drink it. But we have, uh, that's up on our juice feasting page, I believe, the video on how to make that. And um, yeah, you can go look for it. If you yep. need us to send it to you, just let us know. That would be great. But Getting yeah, other minerals help. in while you're fasting is a great help. Taking vitamin mm -hmm. B12. I mean, there's a number of things that you can integrate into a fasting paradigm that won't take you out of ketosis, mm -hmm. that won't, dem in some cases will um, benefit ketosis and won't take you out of that state of being in autophagy, um, going after cancer cells, so mm -hmm. um, cell apoptosis, etc. cetera. Uh, won't raise insulin levels, won't raise blood sugar levels temporarily, and will keep you there. Things like coffee, which some people do really great you know, with coffee, even over a multi-day water fast. You're like, that keeps me mentally where I want to be. And you can measure your ketones and find out actually drinking it. black coffee or tea actually raises ketosis mm -hmm. a little bit and helps to move things along. So um, there's a number of things that you can integrate. But again, for the most part, I don't advise doing 10-day water fasts when you can get the same benefits from a 10-day water fast, doing shorter fasts over a slightly longer period of time and be completely safe and much more comfortable with it. Great question. Um, Ryan, absolutely excellent question. Um, do you want to read got, Katerina's question? We've got Katerina. Hi, Katerina. Checking in on day 23, and she would like to know... Day 23 of your juice feast. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. I wish I was on day 23 of the juice feast. I'd like to know if you can take the probiotics while juice feasting. I don't take them yet. I only juice some sauerkraut or kimchi and add it to some juices during the day. Those are the best probiotics you're going to get. So I, yeah, I get this question from clients a lot. So there's mm -hmm. only one case in which I have clients take a supplemental probiotic. Mm -hmm. And that is in the case of bacterial vaginosis. Um, and you can look up bacterial vaginosis on Google and get a rundown of what the symptomologies are there. We have found, meaning people in a clinical setting have found a particular strain of acidophilus that if you take it orally and vaginally, it will in almost all cases, knock out bacterial vaginosis, which can be incredibly diminishing um, to a woman's health over the long haul. In that case, I'll have someone take a specific strain of probiotic because we know that that's been clinically researched to do its job. In all other cases, though, I just have people do what Katrina just mentioned, which is take sauerkraut or take kimchi. Well, you can eat it like when you're off Katarina the juice feast, and that. you're doing that. But I'm just answering for everybody else. You're already mm -hmm. doing that. But juice your sauerkraut eat the sauerkraut when you're not juice feasting, and that will give you all the probiotics that you need. Now, outside of a plant-based paradigm, yes, we've got other cultured foods that you can eat, such as kefir, which also can be made in a vegan setting with coconut and that kind mm -hmm. of thing, but you or can do kefirs, water. yep, or water, water kefir. kefir is yep. good too. And of course, there's yogurt and mm -hmm. things like that. So um, mm -hmm. you can do those vegan and non-vegan sources and do really well by that. But mm -hmm. again, one of your main sources of probiotics can be sauerkraut. We don't take probiotics and never have. I also think just, I mean, another thing that is really amazing for your probiotics is exposing yourself to as many outdoor environments as you can. Yeah. Because you're going to get all the little micro, all the little microorganisms that actually get in your gut and populate and create really good 
flora and fauna down there, the microorganisms. Gardening. Gardening, yep. walking in the forest, go to lots of different parks. Just be outside where there are plants and nature. And I think that those things are really amazing for your gut health. So we've talked about backpacking. So for years, I've noticed when I go on a backpacking trip of anything longer than five days, of course, we're talking about health here, so this is not too much information. I know what's coming. My, so gonna... <laughs> my, bowel movements co my bowel movements change. They just come right on through. I mean, like, just absolutely guaranteed, same consistency every time. Like, I've got to go, wow, and I just go off, and and it, and I was like, oh, they're like trail poops. I just get in trail poops. I don't know why. Maybe it's all the walking, like, all day long. It must be the it's... walking. Nope. We lived on a farm last summer, and we were in a tent for several months. Gorgeous summer, living outside, working on the farm. I wasn't walking that much. I've been walking around the farm and the same consistency of bowel movements returned as opposed to being in the city where I was on pavement and living in a house. And I was like, oh, this is from being outdoors and being on the ground. Um, the that soil. actually, the soil and being out there in the air almost mm -hmm. all day long, that's actually what changed my microbiome so that I had a different consistency of my bowel movements. Fascinating stuff. Mm -hmm. So getting outside and gardening, getting outside and taking walks and being outside of your house environment or your office environment more often will have, to your point, an outstanding mm -hmm. benefit to your microbiome in your gut. Yeah. And if you haven't discovered him yet, Zach Bush, who is a medical oh. doctor, talks a lot about this. I don't know who well. Zach Bush is. This is great. You'll have to go find him too. How do you spell Zach Bush? Z, Z, sorry, Canadian, uh -huh. Z. Z A C H Zach uh -huh. and then Bush B U S H. Okay, great. Go check him out. He's awesome. All right. I really enjoy all the stuff he shares. And yeah, he talks a lot about just getting out and exposing yourself to as many different outdoor plant filled environments as you can for your gut health specifically. And I think that's really cool that you had that experience. Yeah, it was awesome. Camping. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it was true. Yeah, it was. And I notice our kids also have you know, we're living quite rurally right now where they're outside a lot and we are, you know, surrounded by trees. And I feel like for both of them, our daughter especially, um, has, she will tend towards constipation when we live in the city, as do I as well. And that has completely gone for right. her without really any change in diet, but just being outdoors. You know, that's anecdotal, but yeah. That has been what hap has happened for her, which has been fantastic. Yeah. Just because she's out in nature a lot more. Sean writes, hi guys, on day 37 here. Congratulations. 37 days. Outstanding. Everything's going really well. Getting in at least five or more quarts of juice a day. And I'm starting to incorporate some daily exercise. Hope you guys are doing great. Uh, doing even better now. Thanks. I mean, that makes my morning. I love hearing about... Folks who are into a longer juice feast, getting 30 days and beyond is outstanding. I'll make a couple of points on getting to this stage of a juice feast. You're and getting adding an exercise. Yeah, and, and adding an exercise. So um, on, you're getting in five or more quarts of juice a day. That's outstanding. So everybody watching this, when you get 30 days and beyond in a juice feast, it becomes important to redouble your focus on how much juice you're drinking. The longer you juice feast, the more juice you probably should be drinking. What you don't want to see when you get 30 days and beyond is that your juice tailors back to three and a half quarts and then three quarts and two and a half quarts. And you're like, ah, it's getting kind of difficult for me to get juice in. I'm feeling a bit tired. That's not the direction you want to go. The direction you do want to go is a more athletic approach to juice feasting. All right, I'm really focused on the timing of my juices. I'm making great juices, even if I'm bored, but I'm getting these things on on time and I'm getting the same amount of juice that I got in the first month or maybe a bit more. Can I interrupt you? This drives your metabolism and, um, and keeps your uh, lean body mass up and keeps you feeling fed and nourished, actually keeps you really well nourished for the latter parts of an extended juice feast. Yeah, right. go. All of that totally makes sense. But then there's also, if you very intentionally want to throw in a water fast oh, at yeah. that point, because you're doing really well, your body's cleared out a lot of stuff. And some people, if they're starting to get bored of juice and find that they're not drinking much and they're only drinking two quarts a day mm -hmm. and they're just feeling tired of the whole juicing experience, can be really amazing to throw in several days of water fasting yeah. at that point but if you're you know if you're still feeling really great and wanting to do lots of juice yeah 
And I'll speak to that as well. In terms of fasting on a juice feast, I mean, even from the very beginning days of my coaching back in the early 2000s, if I had a client who was bored of juice and they're like, I just can't do any more juice, yet they still had a lot of scores to settle, and we knew they were fine to keep juice feasting. It's just mentally or just their body was just saying, I don't want this juice today. I'd have my client water fast for a day. And I still have my clients do that. You can design this into your juice feast. Once you get rolling after a few weeks, you could put a day of water fasting in once every fourth day if you want to. A lot of people do really well with that. Three days of juice, now a day with water, electrolyte water. I'm just going to chillax all day and mm -hmm. save myself the time and the money of making juice, reducing the cost of your juice feast and getting all the benefits that you get from water fasting for that day, speeding along your health progress better. And then when you return to juices the following day, after just one day of water fasting, oh, the juice tastes so wonderful. One of the reasons mm -hmm. for this is that there are alkaloids in your green vegetable juice. A plant has alkaloids in it that are part of its defense mechanisms. Things like kale or mustard greens, if you've ever juiced mustard greens, have more alkaloids in them than something like spinach or parsley. Mm -hmm. Alkaloids will build up in your body as you're drinking these four or five quarts of juice a day. And that gets you to the point where your experience is you pick up the jar and you go, mm, and it's just bitter. That's your body giving you real honest feedback. I've got more alkaloids from this plant than I really want right now. And could you take a break? I'm gonna make this not taste good to you. A single day of water fasting when you're at that place will clear those alkaloids out of your system. And when you return to that very same juice the next day, or a fresh one, but the same ingredients, you taste it and you're like, oh, this is wonderful. Because your body has drained itself of those alkaloids, which at a certain point actually become aggravating to your system. So really good point there um, on how to navigate a juice feast that's longer. Make sure you're drinking four to five quarts minimum a day. The exercise that you're getting is great. Don't worry about building muscle so much, but your endurance should get a bit better. And uh, if you need to, throw in a day of water fasting just to keep it interesting and keep yourself moving along. We, Congratulations. Go we, ahead. I only did, what, three days of water fasting? You did three solid days. And that my memory wonderful. is that you said that those were some of the best days of your juice feast. Not that the other days weren't great, but you were like, wow, it was really just, it was such a beautiful point in your yeah. juice feast where you took that break and you went inside. That was yeah, my memory felt of more... it like a spiritual experience rather right. than you know juice feasting i felt so amazing in my mind and my body water fasting feels like a much more interior deep experience in my experience yeah yeah that's yeah. great but congratulations on 37 days sean that's awesome and ryan says yes i need to get outside go on a hike yeah plan it if you live even an hour away where you can go out and just spend the day bring a picnic go on a hike sit on the ground breathe in the moss i'm not sure where you live maybe you're in the desert but anywhere you can go get close to the ground breathe it in and if you're not you tracking can. your steps mm -hmm. your, that can be fun too. your phone probably does it already automatically mm -hmm. but if you want to track it through an app put that on your phone for me I walk more when I'm tracking my steps. It's like, I don't know, I was a Boy Scout, so I'm like getting little merit badges privately mm -hmm. for myself. I just love the little wins of, wow, look, I've gotten 12,000 steps in today mm -hmm. or I'm headed towards that. It gets me out walking more. Yeah. So if you need some incentive like that that's just personal, track your steps, track your miles. it can be fun. Yeah. So Katerina, are you, I just have a question. I'm not going to read out this entire um, post, comment. Are you experiencing pain in your breasts along with it? Like when you get up in the morning and do you notice that it's related to your menstrual cycle? Is it getting worse or lumpier around the time of your cycle or is it just a lump that's there and it's pretty static? Mm -hmm. Because I've recently had an experience with lumps in my breasts and I did go and get them checked out, which I'd be happy to share, but I feel like without knowing more about how you're feeling or how your breasts are feeling, mm -hmm. it can be, yeah. And the other thing I'll mention here, which we came mm -hmm. on to um, anew, actually, I mean, we kind of knew about it, but then we were like really double clicked on this. Mm -hmm. Look up fibrocystic breast disease mm -hmm. and iodine. Fibrocystic breast disease and iodine, like nascent iodine. Uh, in mm -hmm. fact, I'll reply to this underneath your comment here. If that works. Oh, where did it Sometimes all go? Sometimes it pops up. Okay, there we go. 
Um, so sometimes you're feeling pain. So I, for, I, yes, I very recently discovered a lump in my breast and I pondered whether or not I wanted to go have it looked at or not. Mm -hmm. I did intermittent fasting and quite several fairly long fasts as well to see if that would get the lump to go down and it didn't. And I decided to go in and have a mammogram, which ended up, you know, despite all of the alternative knowledge that we have about mammograms, it ended up being a really positive experience for me. And it was discovered that I just have fibroids. And um, they, for me, they were really, really painful right around my cycle, like so much that it hurt to get out of bed. Like mm. they were hurting so much. And... David discovered other women with similar stories and that iodine is a really amazing... Your breasts as a woman store a lot of iodine. It's essential yeah. for breast health. Breasts and thyroid. And apparently your thyroid will hijack most of the iodine in your body. Yeah. So as women, we need to be taking even more of it so that our breasts actually get some. Yeah. So I've started taking iodine every day and it's made a huge difference yeah. to the pain that I have in my breasts. It's gone from like... Oh, I don't even want to be close to people because uh -huh. I'm worried that I'm going to get bumped and it's going to hurt. Particularly kids. Especially my eight-year-old son who is like a giant overgrown puppy and he doesn't realize how big he is and uh -huh. he's constantly uh -huh. elbowing and bumping into me. And yeah. I don't have that experience anymore. And I just feel so lucky to have gone and done that. And I also, I think diagnosis from traditional Western medicine can be a really positive thing. Yeah. So if you go... You always have control over how much control you hand over if you're concerned about that. So go, just go get a diagnosis. It can be really helpful. And, you know, we don't always get correct diagnoses, but in this case, they did a mammogram and a, what was it? What do they call it? Ultrasound. So they were able to see really clearly that it was uh, fibroids in my, or cysts, sorry, cysts that were going on. And eliminating fear around things that are going on in your body is also really good for your health. Feeling fearful about unknown things in your body is bad for your health. So going and getting a diagnosis can be really positive. And it can also help you address it in a much more targeted way. Like as soon as we yep. discovered that my painful lumps were cysts, it was like, okay, well now we can do something with that. And I don't actually need to continue with the help of western medicine i've just got my diagnosis and i can run from there so i hope that helps if you have any other questions about it or more that you want to share that would be totally you're totally welcome to can you go back to the i'm trying to go back to the comments here comments? so ryan also commented while i'm waiting for uh, the comments to re-arise here on our on our feed. Um, mm -hmm. uh, lymphatic system. Yes. I mean, the lymph is huge for the health of your breasts. Mm -hmm. Walking is great. Uh, stretching is really great for lymphatic flow. Obviously, being well hydrated is important. Getting enough sleep actually helps your lymphatic system to open up and take out the trash. Mm -hmm. And then rebounding. Rebounding per minute, mm -hmm. the best thing that you can do to stimulate the flow of lymphatic fluid. Where's so your when you're dealing with, yeah, mine's right ours. oh ours we is right oh we can't see why can i not see it hmm. anyway it's right there and and that was something we wanted to talk about today is putting things in your way when you're trying to heal so that um yeah we're not seeing the comments coming up I don't know what's our comments going on. have disappeared that is weird Where did you click and disappear them i just answered a question and then hmm. and then that was that let's see here um hmm funny so uh, putting things in your way is a really important thing to do when you're trying to put things in place for your healing. Uh, but yeah, when it comes to breast health, lymphatic flow. And so rebounding, walking, stretching, drinking plenty of water. But do look up the iodine connection. And not um, wearing a bra as often as you can. So going braless. I don't understand where our comments have gone to. Well, everybody, we can't see comments. Where are they streaming in from? Oh, how funny. Sorry, everybody, this is live, so we do what we have to do. We just see gray squares where the comments should be. I guess I won't re reply to a comment again in the future. We'll have to, well, I've done it before and to it do it a different way. 
looking down below to see how funny. Where are our comments? Hey, everybody. Go back to the page you were on. Still don't see it. Hmm. Can someone type us a comment really quick? He I want to see if it pops Ryan up. Ryan just did. Oh. Okay. Well, I see it on a different a different place, but that's kind yes, of funny. Yes, Ryan, definitely no bras with wire support. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Clapping. Cool. Yeah, and bouncing, which is what... Yeah, and polyester, totally yep. agree with all of those things. Polyester for so many reasons. I don't, you've probably heard of microplastics that are getting into the oceans and in all of our food so sources. I mean, we don't buy polyester clothes for all of those reasons. Yeah. Huh. All right. Yeah, we still don't see our comments coming up for some reason. But at any rate, we're the here. Internet and I gremlins. see. Oh, we can see it over there. I guess I can see the comments coming up over here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Very good. Uh, let's see. I want to go back to our topics for the day until other comments come in. Um, Ryan, do you know which essential oils are really good for lymph stimulation? If you want to share that, that would be awesome. Yeah. I've never used essential oils for lymph stimulation, but I believe it. Yeah. Not wearing a bra for about a year. Good. Yeah. I've got, so yeah, we have awesome. a whole day devoted to I women's health either, and is... breast health on the, on the juice feasting program. Mm -hmm. And I've got a picture of a burning bra that I've had on there for years. Should probably find a new picture of a burning bra. It's one of yeah. the reasons I love winter also, which you just wear sweaters, yeah. no bra. All right. Let's see other topics. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I referenced here just a moment ago about the rebounder, about putting things in your way. And I, I wanted to bring up this topic just as a point of practice when you're improving your health. Yeah. We're potentially integrating a lot. This is a fullness approach to healing. The fullness approach asks the question, how many good things can I bring to bear? When you're doing an integrative approach like that, where there's multiple moving parts or multiple assets that you're bringing in, you can tend to forget about them. Or they're like, oh, I didn't go to the cabinet or the drawer or find that thing. Anything that you can put in your way, meaning in the normal physical flow of your life, will help you to integrate that thing better. For example, when I'm working with people who have blood sugar issues and I want them to test their fasting blood sugar in the morning, mm -hmm. I'll have my clients put that blood sugar monitor, just that little thing that you prick your finger and get the little drop of blood, right on their bedside table. So that when they get up in the morning after they've w wiped their eyes and they put their feet on the floor, Oh, it's right there next to their phone or their whatever it is, and they can prick their finger and then go about their day. Make sure that you do it. If you're taking certain supplements or superfoods, bring them out of the cabinet and put them on the counter, at least for the duration of a significant healing period that you're in, so that they're right there and you're more likely to see them and integrate them at the, at the moment that you need them, right, or throughout the day. Um, our, my, like I said, my rebounder's right there. I can't turn the computer right now, but I've got rings over here that I'm doing all kinds of calisthenics on. It's in my way. I've got a biomat here on the floor, which means if I want to warm up and lay on that, it's right there. Um, making things as accessible as possible is a really, really good idea. So put things in your way. Yeah. Uh, interesting news today on a self-reliance um, point. Peloton has recalled all of their treadmills because people have been getting injured on them. Now, I'm not saying a treadmill is a bad thing exactly, but for those of us who don't have treadmills or just want to be more self-reliant without the technology, walking, just go outside and breathe that clean air, improve your microbiome. You don't need a Peloton. I'm not saying don't get something like that, but just getting outside will do a lot for you. And I think it's important to recognize when we're improving our health, we don't have to buy all of the fancy equipment. There's a lot that you can do for yourself in a really low-tech way that has a profound effect on, on your health. Things like calisthenics. If you haven't looked into calisthenics, go onto YouTube and just look it up, or body weight training. You don't have to go to a gym, particularly in the COVID era where a lot of gyms are closed, or maybe you don't have the ability to get to a gym. Learn how to do body weight training at home. It requires almost no equipment whatsoever, and you can do it in minutes. So check out that kind of thing. All right, let's see. Oh. Lymphatic cleansing and lymph John Duyard's Life Spa has much on lymphatic cleansing and lymph oils. Super. Yeah. So everybody can follow up on that and take a look at it. Uh, the lymphatic system, uh, particularly for many of us who are just getting into cleansing and healing, is something we really haven't entertained uh, as a health topic at all. We have not given the lymphatic system enough credit. Mm -hmm. And it is, it's three times the volume of your blood. It doesn't have a heart, so it has to be pumped by actual activity. 
and it's the thing that takes out the trash. Mm -hmm. Metaphorically speaking, if you're creating a, a, a mental picture of the function of lymphatic system, or the lymphatic system in your body, it's the garbage disposal service, the garbage truck or the recycling truck coming up to the curb of your house or your apartment and picking up the stuff off the curb and taking it away. Mm -hmm. That's one of the main features of your lymphatic system. Now it's more complicated than that, but it's doing that and it's a huge service. So if the lymphatic system is not driving up to your curb and picking up the recycling and the trash that's already been put there, then the trash and the recycling builds up on your front lawn. Mm -hmm. And when that happens, uh, it starts to get stinky in your neighborhood. Let's put it that way. So, so supporting are, your lymphatic maybe system you could is segue is huge. into all of the detox helpers that we encourage people to use that are specifically targeted at the lymphatic system. Right. Which can make a huge difference to how good you feel while you're juice feasting. My favorite one is skin brushing, for sure. Right. Just that action of brushing your skin stimulates the lymphatic system. It's really good for your skin as well. Okay. And then there's also rebounding. There's rebounding. Mm -hmm. uh, there is the water that you're drinking in the morning. The lemon water mm -hmm. that you're drinking in the morning helps to hydrate your lymphatic system. The lemon actually helps to flush things out of your lymphatic system. It helps the liver too. There's a whole lot that's going on with lemon, mm -hmm. but that really helps. The other benefit that we see, so when, you, when you're when you juice feasting, within a week or two, you can see a change in your face. Like the puffiness goes down. You're like, oh yeah, my clothes are starting to fit more loose. A lot of that is your lymphatic system is drained out and it's not so inflamed anymore. Mm -hmm. One of the huge benefits you're getting when you juice feast or when you do some intermittent fasting is there are things that are simply not coming in to your body anymore that were creating that lymphatic stagnation or inflammation. And just the removal of those things out of your own personal equation actually helps the lymphatic system to clean up quite a lot. The green vegetable juice is in huge service to your lymphatic system. Things like garlic and ginger uh, help to clean up the lymph and improve your immune function, which the lymph is serving a lot of immune functions there. Mm -hmm. So that's really good for you. Cayenne is helpful for cleaning up the lymph. It also is stimulating to your digestive fire. It's great for your cardiovascular system. Mm -hmm. We talk about that a lot on module six of the um, Juice Feasting Nutrition Mastery Program. But um, check out cayenne for your health really good for the lymph yeah so i just saw go ahead is that it for yeah. lymph yeah it's great a very important sewage system we are experiencing technical difficulties right now where our comments aren't popping up but i just saw one over here and now it's disappeared mm -hmm. i didn't see the name on it but someone asked about how to deal with their body feeling really cold on a juice feast that is a great question it's one we get a lot it's a fairly common experience that when you're in a state of cleansing and drinking a lot of juice or even just raw foods that your body will tend to feel cold. And there are a lot of ways that you can help it to warm up. I'm going to refresh this page because the live should continue to go. So. so everybody just hold on 